Welcome PTA Global Community. This is a true treat. One, because I'm here with my great friend, brother, and co-founder of PTA Global. And we're going to continue on with the Up Close and Personal series, Power of Play. And so if you've seen these in order and you've watched them as they come out, you've seen that we've talked to Frank French, we talked to Dr. Roy Sugarman, uh, and, and now we want to look at getting kind of some specificity to this power of play and how it has effect on certain populations and, and different aspects of, of the people that we're going to work with in our communities and in our facilities. And so I'm here with Ian O'Dwyer, and as I mentioned, he's a co-founder. Besides that, he's just brilliant. I'll let him talk about it in a minute. But we're going to talk today about power of play as it deals with reconditioning people. So people who either have some type of syndrome or some type of condition or some type of trauma to the body and how play can influence and impact that. So Ian, if you would, just to start off with, just kind of tell us and tell the community who you are and what you do so we have an understanding of where you're coming from as you talk about it. I have a personal training studio back in Noosa Heads, Australia. It's around about 100 square metres, so about 300 square feet. And primarily what it does is it takes the challenges of everyday life and conditions people to be able to cope with them. And as you've already explained, you know, we've got the brilliance of you know, Roy Sugarman and Brian Grasso. Um, we've got amazing guys like Frank who, who bring to the awareness side of things now how important it is for play. And I think the unfortunate part about our industry that it's, it's almost got to the stage where it's been taken over, taken over by science and it's, it's taken to the point where that communication, that interaction has disappeared. And a lot of times for us when we're trying to recondition people, unless they can trust us, unless they can build a rapport with us, then it doesn't matter how good we are, it doesn't matter how good our exercise programs are or our exercise library is, nothing we do will work. So what we have to do is bring back confidence, bring back love in their own body, love and appreciation of what they have, of what they had, and of what the body's brilliance is to recapture that again. And it's probably in my studio, it's quite simple because I've got an open room with one machine, a power plate, a freeform board, foam rollers, balloons. I've got all the toys or all the tools that I need to implement simple, subtle movements that allow the body to accept challenges by asking it whether it can move inside a certain threshold or bubble. And once you can observe that information and learn from what the body's telling you, you can then start to take that and turn it into a game. Because once we start to implement a game, subconscious movement is free-flowing. And we can regress that game, that drill, that challenge, no matter which way you want to title it. Because some people just aren't comfortable calling it the power of play. Right. Right. So it's interesting because as soon as you start to address a challenge, a drill or a game, all of a sudden they start to smile. So emotionally now I have a connection. So I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, I haven't got the brilliance of Roy Sugarman, and nor would I want because that comes with a lot of responsibility. But it's amazing when you bring back to grassroots what we're all designed to do, and that's move. And we've all got this, this innate capacity to want to challenge each other and, and, and be competitive. But when you do that, it's amazing what you see in what happens with the body. Pains that were in the body start to disappear. Impingements that were there now start to retract or recede. You have areas of the body that were glued up or gunked up now start to get some sort of extensibility and movement. So when we look at the whole reconditioning aspect and we bring play into that, can you give us, because you have true expertise in it, because this is what you do on a daily basis, and can you give us some examples of some of the things that you've done from a game standpoint and some of the results that you've seen or what's happened with some of the clientele that you've worked with? I'm one of the most privileged people in the world. I've got people like you that I learn from on a daily basis who are not only just my friends, my family, but also my mentors. And I think when we share our ideas and we share our knowledge and we share the realities of life, and when you have people coming into you with all sorts of things that... I shudder sometimes because I truly don't know how I can help people. But it's interesting, I've got, I had one gentleman who's uh, a great guy, he was 63, and had a stroke. Mm. Now, it's interesting because if I went down the traditional manner and I worked outside my scope of practice and I started to diagnose and try to treat him right. for that, I couldn't get any success. So I just thought, well, okay, let's make this simple. 
I got a simple balloon, his whole left hand side was paralysed. By implementing a game where I had him in a, a passageway where he couldn't fall over, by implementing a game and getting him to try and hit the balloon with that left side that didn't work or function because of what had happened to the plasticity in the brain, he now started to get hip extension, thoracic extension, and also now extension in through the, the, uh, the echo complex. It's amazing by taking a simple balloon, the first thing he did was he smiled. So all of a sudden, that suppression that we have down there, those things that we've been told that we can't do over and over and over again now, start to pour out and start to free up. And the hope that it gives them and the belief that it gives them now starts to evolve and starts to grow quite quickly because they can start to see that they've been told certain things to protect them mentally, but physically and emotionally we can change that if we ask the body rather than tell it. It's interesting, you can take powerful stories like that or stories from children that we've, that we've trained, you know, at 10, 11 or 12 years of age with various types of formalities in their body that require more speed or more strength or whatever it may have been. There's one particular girl now, Roddy, who's, it's quite interesting, she's, she's the most beautiful young girl, she's 11 years of age and she's got a severe scoliosis. Now, she has gone down a path where the specialist has told her that she has to have a back, a back brace. Anyway, so the interesting thing was the father is a lovely guy, he came in and said, uh, you know, this is what we've been told, we have to have a brace put on. And what it basically had happened is they'd been to see the specialist, he sent them to a wellness professional, had done everything he was supposed to have done, and the, the scoliosis got 10 degrees worse. Mm. What was quite interesting, he came to me and I said, well, you know, what do you think? The first thing I did is I started playing with balloons. And this beautiful girl, at 11 years of age, she dances, sings, moves beautifully. She tapped that balloon around the room like there was no tomorrow. So from a common sense perspective, from an observation, from an intuitive, intuitive perspective, my gut feeling was, we can change this and we can help this. But we can't tell it because that's what's been done already and that's failed. We have to ask it. So we started to implement some silly gate walks, some really stupid things using her hands and driving. Her and her father do it on a daily basis. And then I implemented some simple power plate work and then I implemented some simple games with some balls. Well. And I've videoed all of the sessions. I've only done four half hour sessions with her. She's gone from a person who couldn't really flex over down to a person who flexes over and the pelvis is quite square. Is it perfect? No. My job isn't to fix. My job is purely to be able to give them options and the ability to help them heal themselves, to empower them with the ability to take control of their health and wellness. So it's pretty powerful when you bring back fun into what we do we can get some amazing results. Yeah. Like someone wants to get more information about you, now obviously they can contact us through PTA Global when you're part of the PTA Global family, that's what you do, but you also have your own, your own business. You know, so if people want to get a hold of you, they want to contact you, they want to find out more about you, where can we go to get that information for you? Um, they can either go to www.fitnesspersonally.com. That's where they'll get me no problems at all, Ronnie. I'm more than happy to answer any questions and, and do anything I can to, to help anyone on the, the highway. Brilliant. Odie, on behalf of Myself, selfishly, and PTA <laughs> Global and our community, thank you so much for being here, brother. Thanks, Ronnie. So it was a pleasure, my friend. All right, thank Thanks, you. guys.